So um, our first lesson this uh, semester is on Unit 7 in Solving Radical Equations. In your Google Classroom, um, you have this calendar, so make sure you look it over so you're aware of what we are going to cover and when. So as I stated before, this unit, we're going to solve um, radical equations. Um, our essential question is, how do you find the solutions to a radical equation? So what I want to talk to you all about is what is a radical. So this is what we call a radical, right? So when we solve these, um, the one that we see here is a square root. And if we put a 3 here, that's a cube root. So in this lesson, we're going to talk about how to solve these. So first of all, radical equations contain a variable within a radical. So that means that we have something like this, the variables underneath that radical. They can be solved algebraically by raising both sides of the equation to a power. So that power will coincide with whatever the index is. So if it's a square root, then it would be um, a power of 2. If it's a cubit, it'd be a power of 3. They can also be solved by graphing, and we'll talk about that at the end of the lesson. So um, I want you guys to remember this right here. So hopefully everybody remembers that if we don't have a number there, then that's a square root. So that means if we were trying to solve this type of problem, then we would square both sides. Okay, so I'm going to actually walk you all through the process of this right here and talk you through it. So that's what I'm going to do next. So let me pull this down a little bit. So I'm going to actually write this problem out here, and then we're going to talk about it. So we've got the cube root of x minus 2 equals 0. So it says here we have to isolate the radical. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get the 2 to the other side. So to do that, we're going to add 2 to both sides. That's going to give you, again, the cube root of x now equal to 2. The next step says raise both sides of the equation to the power equal to the index. Okay, so um, to do that, we're then going to take this to the third power and this to the third power. Just remember, you got to do both sides. Okay. So now um, it says to simplify. So when we do this, this cancels out this, right? So that's just going to leave me with x there, and that's going to be x to the 2 to the third power. Well, 2 times 2 is 3 times another 2 is 8. So x is equal to 8. Okay? Um, so that's our process. Um, so I want you to notice here what this says. This right here says we're going to... Um, when we raise each side of an equation to an even power, it may result in extraneous solutions. So check your answers. So that means an even power means that when we square both sides, this is the one that might result in extraneous solutions. So we're going to check our answers. Well, the key with me is I check answers no matter what, just because I like to make sure I'm right. So here's our first equation. Now I'm going to talk to you all about another way that this might be expressed to you. Same exact equation. Okay, so we could also write this equation as 3 times x minus 5 to the 1 half power. Remember, 1 half power is the same thing as a square root, and that equals 18. So you might see these questions written either way, but they are essentially the same question. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and work this, and I'm going to rewrite it the way it was originally written. So that's going to be x minus 5 equals 18, right? So um, the first thing we have to ask ourselves is what's happening with that 3 because we got to get the radical by itself. So um, is it being added, subtracted, multiplied, divided? Think about that a second. Yes, it's being multiplied. So the opposite of multiplication is division, right? So we're always going to do the opposite operation to get rid of something. So that leaves us with x minus 5 and then 18 divided by 3 is 6. Now our next step is going to be, we got to get rid of the square root. So to get rid of the square root, we have to square both sides. So that's our next step. So that's going to leave us with x minus 5, and 6 times 6 is 36. Okay, then we're going to have to get rid of that negative 5. So we're going to do the opposite operation again. So we're going to add 5 to both sides. So x is equal to 41. Now, this one we did square both sides. So, um, if you recall in the previous slide, we talked about if we have to square both sides, then we have to check our answers. Truth be told, we're going to check all our answers because I just don't like, um, I like to make sure my answers are right. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take that 41 and we're going to put it back in our equation. So, we're going to do 41 minus 5, um, and that was three times that. Sorry about that. And then that's equal to 18. 
41 minus 5 is 36, so we got 3 times the square root of 36 is equal to 18, and then the square root of 36 is 6, so 3 times 6 is 18. So that tells us that 18 is equal to 18. That means our answer does check out, so this is the correct answer. So with letter B, I'm going to do the same thing I did with letter A, and I'm going to write it as a fractional exponent again. So this one, if I were to write it the way it would appear if it was a fractional exponent, it would be 4 times 2x minus 5, this time to the 1 3rd power. Remember, the cube root is 1 3rd, and that equals 12. So that's the way the question would appear, again, if um, it was in a, in a fractional exponent. So I'm going to go ahead and write the problem again like we did before, just the way it is. And then we're going to talk about how we work this problem. So once again, it's being multiplied by 4, so we need to divide by 4 to get rid of the 4. So that's going to give us the square root of 2x minus 5. 12 divided by 4 is 3. And remember, oh sorry, this was a cube root, y'all. Um, so we're going to keep that cube root right here. So that's going to be 3. Okay, so now how do we get rid of a cube root? Don't we have to cube it? So when we cube it, that goes away, right? So this is going to be 2x minus 5. And then 3 times 3 is 9 times another 3 is 27. So now we're going to add 5 to both sides. So 2x equals 32. Divide both sides by 2. So x is equal to 16. Now, when it's a cube root, I don't have to check for extraneous solutions, but I'm going to. I'm going to check my answers always to make sure that it's right. So I'm going to do, again, 4 cube root of 2 times 16 minus 5, and we're going to see if that equals 12. So we've got 4 square root of 32 minus 5 equals 12 cube root. So 4 cube root of 27 equals 12. So I want to talk to you all about what do we do with this cube root of 27. So if you don't have a calculator, one of those fancy calculators that gives you the ability um, to take a cube root, then how do we handle this cube root of 27? Well, hopefully you recall that that is, again, 27 to the one-third power. So when your calculator, if you take 27 to the one-third power, that equals 3. So 12 does indeed equal 12. So that is our correct answer. So for these U tries, what I'd like you to do is go ahead and attempt the problem, pause the video, attempt the problem, and then come back to me when you're done. Okay, so for this one, I'm going to do what I did before. I'm going to rewrite the problem. Okay, so on this one, I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. So that's going to give me the square root of 4x minus 8. Remember, we're trying to get that radical by itself. Now, to get rid of the square root, I'm going to square both sides. So that gives me 4x minus 8 equals 36. Now we have to add 8 to both sides. So 4x equals 44. Divide both sides by 4. So x equals 11. Now again, remember, because this is a square root problem, we have to check this problem to make sure that it is not extraneous. So we're going to do 3 plus the square root of 4 times 11 minus 8 and see if that equals 9. So this is going to be 3 plus 44 minus 8. So that's 3 plus the square root of 36. So the square root of 36 is 6, so 3 plus 6, that equals 9, so 9 equals 9. Checked out, right? So x does indeed equal 11. Once again, I'd like you guys to pause the video here, work the problem, and then come back to me when you're done. So I'm going to rewrite this problem. 
the cube root of 3x plus 1 equals 4. This one to me is easier than the last one, y'all. So I'm going to cube both sides. That gets rid of that. So I get 3x plus 1 equals 4 to the third is 64. I'm going to subtract by 1 from both sides. That gives me 3x equals 63. Then divide both sides by 3. So x equals 21. So here again, I'm going to check my answer. So I get the third root of 3 times 21 plus 1 equals 4. So this is going to be the third root of 63 plus 1 equals 4. So the third root of 64 equals 4. And again, if we're talking about this, we're going to go 64 to the 1 third power, unless your calculator has the ability to do a cube root. And we're going to find out that that's 4 and 4 equals 4 again. So once again, that was our great check for that answer. So the next set of problems are similar, but a little bit different. So I'm going to go ahead and write this like it is here. 8x plus 6 equals 3 times the square root of x. So again, we have a square root on the left and we have a square root on the right. So we're going to take these two, the, um, we're going to square them. Okay. So the key here is that cancels out that. So we get 8x plus 6. But I need you to watch because on this one, we're going to apply that second power to the 3 and to the square root. Okay. So that's really important that you guys understand that. So that's going to give us 3 squared. And then obviously this cancels out that. So that's going to leave me with x. So this is going to be 8x plus 6 equals 9x. Then we're going to subtract the 8x from both sides. So 6 equals x. So here again, because the square root, we have to check our answer. So we're going to do 8 times 6 plus 6 and see how that compares to 3 square root of 6. So this is going to give us 48 plus 6, 3 square root of 6, right? So this is going to be the square root of 54 is equal to 3 square root of 6. Now I want to show you a little trick here. Um, you could factor the 54 and what you'll see is that when we get that we're going to get the square root of 9 times the square root of 6 but I want to show you all something here. So to put that 3 back underneath that radical wouldn't we square it? So that would end up being the square root of 9 times the square root of 6 right which is the square root of 54. And if again, if you didn't notice it over here, this is going to be the square root of 9 times the square root of 6, which is 3 square root of 6. So either way, we get 3 square root of 6 is equal to 3 square root of 6. And that's an easy way to see that they're the same. So now I'd like you guys to go ahead and work this problem. Uh, pause the video. Come back to me and check it when you're done. So I'm going to re th rewrite this problem again. So I'm going to do the third root of x plus 6 is equal to 2 times the third root of x minus 1. Now as I taught this, um, I noticed that this was the most missed problem that we did today. So again, we're going to cube this and we're going to cube this, okay? So when we cube the left, these are going to cancel each other out, so we're going to get x plus 6. Over here, remember, we're applying that power of 3 to both of these things here, right? So that means that we're going to have 2 to the third times x minus 1. So this is going to be x plus 6 equals 8 times x minus 1. So x plus 6 is equal to 8x minus 8. Now I'm going to start moving some stuff. So I'm going to move the x and I'm going to move the 8. So that's going to give me 14 is equal to 7x. Divide both sides by 7. So x equals 2. So I'm going to plug that 2 back up in there and check and make sure that I got the right answer. So we're going to get the cube root of 2 plus 6 is equal to 2, the cube root of x, or sorry, 2 minus 1. So this is going to be the cube root of 8 is equal to 2 times the cube root of 1. And again, remember, you can do 8 to the 1 third here, and then you can do 2 times 
1 to the 1 3rd here. Well, 8 to the 1 3rd is 2, and 2 times, this would be 2 times 1, so 2 does equal 2. So it checks out, so our answer is x equals 2. So at the beginning of this next section, it says to solve by graphing, we graph one side of the equation as y1 and the other is y2. Use the second calc 5 feature to find the point where the function intersects, and this method will not result in extraneous solutions. So first we're, what we're going to do is we're going to solve this algebraically, and then we're going to check it by solving it graphically, okay? So let's go ahead and rewrite this, go, uh, write this problem here. So this is 2x plus 14 is equal to x plus 3. So hopefully you remember we're going to square both sides here to get rid of that square root. So that's going to give us 2x plus 14. And this is really going to be x plus 3 times x plus 3. Hopefully you remember that we're going to multiply the first together. So that's going to give us x squared. And then we're doing outside plus 3x, inside plus 3x, and then last, plus 9. So this combines some like terms. So we're going to combine the 3x and the 3x. That's going to give us 6x. Now what we need to do is move this stuff from the left to the right. So we're going to subtract 2x from both sides. And we're going to subtract 14 from both sides. So that's going to give us 0 over here. And that's going to give us x squared plus 4x minus 5. Now what we need to do is factor this. So that's going to give us x in the factors of negative 5 that when added together give you a positive 4 going to be plus 5 and minus 1. So now we're going to set each of these equal to 0 and solve for x. So this is going to be x is equal to negative 5 and this is going to be x is equal to 1. Then what we're going to do is check those two answers, okay? So we're going to do that over here. So let's go ahead and plug these in. So in this first one, we're going to do 2 times negative 5 plus 14. And we want to see if that is equal to negative 5 plus 3. So this is going to be negative 10 plus 14. That's going to be negative 2. So this is going to be 4, square root of 4. Is that equal to negative 2? Well, the square root of 4 is 2. Sorry. This is 2. And 2 does not equal negative 2. Okay? So we know that this cannot be a solution. All right? So now let's check the other one. So now we're going to do 2 times 1 plus 14. Is that equal to 1 plus 3? So this is going to be the square root of 2 plus 14, which is the square root of 16, which we know is 4. And 1 plus 3 is 4. So this answer does check out. So this is our answer. Now we're going to look at it graphically. So the last two problems we're going to solve by graphing. So we're going to graph one side of the equation as y1 and the other side is y2. So we're going to use... Um, the graphing calculator to do this, and we're going to use Desmos. So I'm going to show you both. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to write this left side right here over here. So that's going to be the square root of 2x plus 14, and y2 is going to be x plus 3. So I'm going to show you this both ways, guys, okay? So let me show you with the graphing calculator first. So when you turn on your TI-84, it's going to look like this. And what we want to do is we want to go to this y is equal to here. And then we want to go ahead and put the equation for y1 where it says y1 and the equation for y2 where it says y2. So we're going to go ahead and go second x squared to put the square root in there. And we're going to put 2x plus 14. 2x plus 14 in our top equation. And then we're going to go down. And on this second equation, we're going to put x plus 3. Now what we're going to do next, we're going to have, go ahead and graph it, okay? So we're going to go ahead and graph it right here. And as you see, these two graphs are going to intersect. And the x value of the point of intersection is the answer to our question. So we can kind of see here that if we count over here, this is 1, right? 1 comma 4. That is that point of intersection. But if I can't see that, what I can do is I can push 2nd and trace. And then I can go to 5 down here, intersect, click 5. 
And then if you notice when I do that, it says first curve. So I'm going to press enter. That is the blue curve. And then the red, the red curve is the second one. And then we're going to click again to guess what the X and Y value is. So we're going to click enter here and it gives us the intersection. So X equals one and Y equals four. And for this question, the only part of this that we're interested in is the X value. So again, if you notice, I said, I thought this was X equals one, right? So that's how we do this with the graphing calculator. And next we're gonna do it with Desmos. So now with Desmos, we're gonna do the same thing. So we're gonna say Y equals, and we can go down here to our keyboard and we can put the square root of two X plus 14. So that's our first um, graph. And then we're gonna do the other one here, Y equals X plus three. Here again, you can see the intersection of these two graphs. Y'all see that? Um, and I can actually hover over this point or click on it and it will tell me what it is. So again, the only part of this that we're interested in is the X value and it says that it's one four. So we looked at two different ways to do this, but no matter which way we do this, we noticed that the answer was X equals one. Remember, we're only concerned with the X value for these problems. So once again, what we're going to do with this, we're going to solve it algebraically and then we're going to sol solve it graphically, okay? So we're going to go ahead and do this negative 9x plus 28 is equal to negative x plus 4. Once again, we're going to square this. And recall again that this is going to be negative x plus 4 times negative x plus 4. So this is going to be negative 9x plus 28. And that's going to be equal to neg x times x, negative x times negative x is x squared. And we've got negative 4x inside here, which is again another negative 4x, and then last to last, which is 16. So now we're going to do negative 9x plus 28. Again, going to combine some like terms over here on the right, so that's going to be negative 8x plus 16. Now we're going to add 9x to both sides, and we're going to subtract 28 from both sides. So that's going to leave us zero over here and we're going to get x squared plus x minus 12. So now we have to factor this. So this is x and x. What are the factors of negative 12 that when added together give you a positive 1? So that's going to be plus 4 and minus 3. So we're going to set each of these equal to zero. So that would be x is equal to negative 4. And this is going to be x is equal to 3. So now we're going to check these again like we did before to make sure they are valid solutions. So we're going to do negative 9 times negative 4 plus 28. And what we want to see is that equal to minus, uh, minus 4 plus 4. So this is going to be 36 plus 28. And that's going to be negative 4 minus 4, that's going to be 8. So this is going to be square root of 64 is equal to 8. Yes, so that's 8 is equal to 8. Then let's do the other one. So now we're going to do negative 9 times 3 plus 28. And we want to see if that's equal to negative 3 plus 4. Okay, so this is going to be negative 27 plus 28. Is that equal to 1? This is the square root of 1. Is that equal to 1? Yes, 1 is equal to 1. So both of these solutions are valid. Now we're going to check them graphically. So here again, we're going to do a y1 and a y2. So y1 is going to be equal to what's on the left. So it's going to be uh, negative x 9x plus 28 and then for y2 we're going to put in negative x plus 4. Now I want to talk to you all about how you're going to have to do this with a graphing calculator. 
Here again, we're going to go to y is equal to, and we're going to put these equations in. Now, I'm going to do the square root again, so I'm going to do second um, x squared, so that's square root. Really important when we enter these in that we use the minus symbol, the negative symbol down here, not minus. So we got to do negative 9x plus 28 for our first equation. And then when we go down here for our second equation, similar thing. So we're going to put, again, minus x uh, plus 4, okay? So we can click graph again, and it's going to show us this graph. Now, uh, hopefully you're going to notice something really interesting in a minute with respect to these two graphs. What I notice, and hopefully what you notice, is that they literally intersect at two different points, okay? So um, this time we can go second and trace again, and it will give us for 5, um, Again, we're going to click first curve, that's our blue curve, then our red curve, and then it's going to tell us. Now, this time notice that it only gives us our first value, right? So what we can do, we can just look at the graph and figure out what the second point is. Because again, remember, we're only concerned about the x value. So again, we can count over here 1, 2, 3. So we should see that the other value over here is 3. So we're going to do this again on decimal. So here again, we're going to put our equations in. So we're going to have y equals. And we're going to come down here and get our square root again. And we're going to do minus 9x. So for this one, it's not a big deal, y'all. Plus 28. And that's our first curve. And then we're going to put our second curve. And that's going to be negative x plus 4. So here again, we should be able to see where these two curves intersect. And we can hover over these. That tells us negative 4 there. And down here, it's 3. So those are our two points of intersection. So our answers are x equals negative 4 and x equals 3. And remember, once again, you could check these, but I mean, graphing is the most accurate way to see what the answers are when they're whole numbers. It won't always work, but sometimes it will. So I say you can always check your answers using graphing.